Greetings YouTube, Mr. Sif here with Camper Killer Commentary number 21, and today I'd like to talk about the history of public relations and the man who invented the mainstream marketing techniques used to control us every day. Some people call him the father of spin, some people call him the master of marketing, some people called him the man behind the curtain. I just think he's one of the biggest jerks I ever heard of. Edward Bernays was born in 1891, and he thought most people were mindless and dumb. He said that a select minority of us could think, and the rest of us were led around by herd instinct. He called us all dangerous and irrational, and compared us to animals like cattle. He was an asshole just like his uncle Sigmund Freud, and they both agreed if we made our own choices we'd be destroyed. Since he was a boy, he loved psychology, and when he grew up, he thought there was a problem with democracy. And that's where he got the idea to change society with his uncle's psychoanalytical philosophy. First, he served in the Creel Committee, a government agency created to persuade the public into loving the military. After that, he gets into marketing and public relations, newspapers, magazines, TV, and radio stations. Edward Bernays spent all his days inventing new ways to change how we It all begins in the 1920s when women smoking cigarettes is considered a crime in our nation. That's when he's contacted by George Hill, the president of the American Tobacco Corporation. Hill tells Bernays that women should be smoking, that millions could be made if the social taboo is broken. He was hoping Bernays' brain would come up with a campaign to change the way we behave. Then came the 1929 Easter Parade, where Bernays paid a bunch of ladies to smoke where reporters would see him. And on his signal, they held him high and called them Torches of Freedom. The very next day, it changed everybody's views. Torches of Freedom was all over the news. Thanks to one slogan and a stage spectacle, women smoking instantly became acceptable. Edward Bernays spent all his days helping corporations place thoughts in our brains. Next comes breakfast. I bet you heard it's the best meal of the day. Uh-uh, that's invented by Edward Bernays. You see, in the 30s, the largest distributor of bacon was beech nut packing, and since nobody was eating it, sales were slacking. They needed to take action, so they called up Edward Bernays. So Edward made up a fake survey and sent it out to his doctor friends and paid them to say, a hearty breakfast is the best way to start your day. And of course he made them mention bacon and eggs. The results are published in the mainstream media, where other doctors see it, and then they all agree with it for no other reason than to not look stupid. I mean, who's gonna dispute a survey by Bernays? And then he used the same technique to get dentists to agree that fluoride's healthy and great for your teeth. Edward Bernays always got paid making people obey everything he would say. Edward Bernays went to his grave after teaching the media the tricks of his Bernays tricked women with long hair not to chop it so the largest maker of hair nets could collect the profit. He also got the fashion industry to call the color green the hottest color of the season so people would buy Lucky Strike cigarettes in the green box when they see them. But that's all la dee dee and la dee da da hee hee and ha ha. Let's take a look at how a fruit company and the CIA got Bernays to stage a coup to overthrow Guatemala. In the 50s, the United Fruit Company owns almost everything in Guatemala. Power, railroads, mail system, and the agua. Not to mention they also own almost all the land forcing the people of Guatemala to meet their demands. And then one man stands up and is democratically elected their new president, and he promises the residents he'll remove the fruit company and make them independent. But the head of the CIA is one of the largest shareholders in the fruit company, and so is his brother. So with the help of the government of the USA, they hire Bernays to make this president go away. By this time, Bernays knows exactly what he's doing. He pays reporters to report that the Soviet Union is using Guatemala as a secret base station to wage an attack a full-scale invasion. Americans play into this with no hesitation, afraid Guatemala will bring total annihilation to our nation if we don't invade them first. The CIA thanks Bernays for his work. What follows is 36 years of civil war, 200,000 dead Guatemalans on the floor. I just went 26-4. Let the chorus play once more. Edward Bernays spent all his days inventing new ways to change how we behave. Edward Bernays 
went to his grave After teaching the media the tricks of his trade